You can figure out the greatest common factor of these by first taking the greatest common factor of the coefficients. So for example, 12 and 15, the greatest common factor in this case would be 3. And then what you would do is multiply it by the common variable to the lowest common exponent. So in this case, for example, for a, we've got a and we've got a squared. Well, you know there's at least one a in each one of these, so that would be part of your greatest common factor. And we know that b, there's a b in both, and there's at least one b. All right, so in that case, your greatest common factor will be 3ab. For b, you have 18x4y2, and you've got negative 24x3y5. Okay, so the greatest common factor between 18 and negative 24 will be a 6. From there, let's take a look at x. Well, we know there's x to the 4 and x to the 3. There's at least an x to the 3. So it'll be 6x to the power of 3. And then with y, we have y2 and we've got y5. Well, at least there's going to be two y's. So your greatest common factor here will be 6x to the power of 3, y to the power of 2. For c, we have a to the power of 3, b, c squared, and we've got 2, a, c to the power of 7. If it helps, let's just put a 1 in front of this because we've got a coefficient in front of the other one. The greatest common factor between 1 and 2 is just going to be 1. Okay, so leave that alone. Now, we have a to the power of 3, and we've got a. Well, we know there's going to be at least one a in each one of these. Taking a look at b, there's no b on this one, if you notice. So that's not going to be part of your greatest common factor. Next up, we've got c. You've got c to the power of 2, and you've got c to the power of 7. You know there's going to be at least two c's in each one of these, so it's going to be c squared. So your answer here is going to be a c squared. Next up we've got d which is negative 40 a to the power of 3 b. You got negative 20 a squared b to the power of 3 and we've got negative 10 a squared b squared. Okay, The greatest common factor for the coefficients is going to be negative 10. So we can get rid of those parts. Okay, next up we've got the a's. We've got a cubed, a squared, and a squared. Well, we know we have at least an a squared. So that's going to be your next part. And then for the b's, you've got b. You've got b cubed and b squared. We know there's going to be at least a b. So this will be your greatest common factor for d.